imagine how Moses felt when he raised his arms and parted the Red Sea? Hmm. Probably relieved that he hadn't made a fool out of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would have been a bit embarrassing if it hadn't parted. Uh-huh, just a bit. I wish the Lord had used me for something like that. Well, you could raise your arms and help me take down the drapes after dinner. How's that? Oh, please. <laughs> Not exactly what I had in mind, but sure. Well, I realize that I haven't cleaned them in almost a year. Well, I can understand that, seeing that we've had a few minor changes around here in the past few months, but uh, I'll overlook it. Mm, so says the man who's been promising me a clean garage for three weeks. Uh, soon, soon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not as exciting as leading the children out of Israel, but I think the Lord is using us as his vehicles. I mean, to, uh, to bring Jill and her, her mother back together. Well, that's fine, except Judge Slaymaker still hasn't told her. Well, she will. Yes, but when? Jill was really upset after her interview the other day. Yeah, I wonder why she didn't tell her. Well, I can understand her apprehension, but it really is a little unfair to Jill. I mean, Judge Slaymaker did make some pretty unusual offers. What was the poor kid supposed to think? Well, I guess that somebody really cared about her for a change. I see what you mean, though. It's like somebody gave her a jigsaw puzzle, and she has all the pieces, but not the picture of how to put it together. Well, the incident made her so uncomfortable that she started to talk about leaving Kingsley. What? It's true. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. Well, how are you going to stop it? Well, I will. I mean, I don't want to interfere, but I'm, I'm going to go to Judge Slaymaker. I'm going to tell her how we feel. You sure that she won't misinterpret our intentions? Well, I don't know. It's possible, but it's a risk we've got to take. Mm, I agree. I mean, like you said, it's, it's not as monumental as what Moses did, but I feel that it's just as thrilling helping getting a family back together. And it all happened because of a failing bookstore. Mm. You know, if we had to sell that place today, I, uh, I wouldn't mind. See, this one event, this one thing, it's, it's made the whole thing worthwhile. All right, Jason. I know you think I did a great job on those paving contracts, mm -hmm. but I'm reading something else on that politician face of yours. Well, am I that transparent? You usually are. Gone, I'll have to do something about that. <laughs> you do that and you'll probably never win another election again either. <laughs> You know, speaking of elections, Gene, how would you like to work with me? I guess the county doesn't like anyone to sit in this chair for too long, huh? No, no, no. I told you that good men don't go unnoticed. You want to hear the details? Sure, but I think you ought to know a few things first. Okay, shoot. In the past six months, I've changed my profession, my residence, and my marital status, which means well, I've been happier than I've been in years, and I like my life the way it is, and I'm not so sure that I want to make any waves. Well, that's fair enough. Maybe I can give you a good reason. Yeah? Remember when you talked about wanting to work for the public? How they deserved a government that really did serve them? Right, that's what I'm doing now. I agree. But there's a way that you can be of even more help, and that's as my field deputy. Oh, hey, that's quite a step up, Jason. You can handle it. Well, that's not exactly what I expected, but thanks for the compliment. Well, before you get all choked up about the honor of it, let me fill you in on a few details. It's a hard job. As yeah. field deputy, you'll be the right-hand man. That means that anybody that wants to get to me with any kind of conflicts or disputes is going to have to go through you. Mm. Okay, so go on. You'll be up to your eyeballs in budgets and county programs. You'll have to deal with cranky bureaucrats and irate councilmen and constituents who will often tell you things about yourself that you just as soon not know. <laughs> How could anyone refuse? Mm. I promise you this, though. You'll have the satisfaction of working with people and helping them and of proving to them that the county government is there for them and that they do care. Jason Prescott, champion of the underdogs. Only with the help of people that I can count on and trust. What do you say, Gene? Okay, now wrap it around. Like this? Mm-hmm. Take it behind and through. You know, you never told me whether or not you definitely plan to use the coming storage room for your clinic. Uh, slip it through the knot. Yes, I did. When? The other day at lunch with Dave. Got it? Yeah. Well, what do you think? 
Got a pair of scissors? Details. Ties are stupid anyway. Let's be serious. Okay, but wait till I stop looking like Harpo Marx. All right, now, let's be serious. When are you and Dave going to do something about the clinic? The time for talk is over. It's time now for some action. <laughs> What's so funny? A couple of months ago, you would have done anything to keep me from even thinking about the clinic. And now you're carrying on because I'm not moving fast enough? I'm not carrying on. Yeah, you were. And I love you more for it. Well, I love you back. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was just getting ready to talk to you about it. Sure you were. I was. I think we're going to give Jeff a security deposit today. Leon and I are going over this afternoon to talk to him. That's a good doctor. What? No fanfare? No fireworks? Later. Okay. Now it's my turn. What are your plans after graduation? How about dinner and a movie? I mean, after that. More fanfare and fireworks. I can see I'm getting nowhere fast. Let me get to the point. I'm going to need a receptionist slash secretary at the clinic. Are you interested? It depends what the fringe benefits are. Well. What would you say if I told you I'd love to, but I'd rather do something I'm more qualified for? I'd say you want to use the talents God gave you for teaching, right? Right. Thanks, Ben, for knowing me so well and understanding. Do you have any ideas to wear? How about Anchorage, Alaska? Too far. <sighs> Good. Then you'll be glad to hear I've only applied to schools in the area. You sneak. No. I'm just trying to make sure our future is all wrapped up and tied in a bow. Speaking of which, <clears throat> If I'm going to take the afternoon off to take care of our future, I guess I'd better uh, take care of my responsibilities here in the present. Right? Right. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Show off. today? I don't know. I think so. What's all that? Lunch, silly. What does it look like? I don't think I can do that. Oh, Miriam. I mean, it's only milk and sandwiches. <laughs> That's not so difficult. No, but you see, I can't even take ice cubes out of a tray without calling a caterer. <laughs> Go on, have some. <laughs> it seems all right. Of course it's all right. Why do you ask? I don't know. Good. It's very good. Miriam, what's wrong? Wrong? I have a secret. A secret? What secret? I know where Mother is. What? Where's, where is she? What, did she call or something? No. Well, uh, did your father tell you where she is? No. She doesn't want Daddy to know where she is. Well, then where is she? She's here. She's in the basement, and she's spying on you, Nancy. She is watching every move you make. Miriam, leave. No, Nancy, no. You see, you better just watch out, because she just knows everything you're doing. She has, she's been there all the time. In the basement? 
That's it. You've just signed your own commitment papers, Mary. I could use somebody to talk to. Him. You sure you want to talk to this guy? Hey, Come I'm on. a doctor. I can handle him. <laughs> and uh, I thought I didn't have any patients at Hollister Square. Well, it can get lonely in here. Well, we're here to change all that. Oh. Dave and I want to rent your storage room for our clinic. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. You know, uh, it's not it's not that I'm not grateful. Liz and I have been praying about this for a long time, but we didn't hear from you. Well, so we thought... we've been praying too. And we believe this is what the Lord wants us to do. And hey, what are your monthly operating expenses on this place? Well, it wouldn't be bad if uh, business would pick up. The Lord knew I really needed you this month, and we've got an added expense, a $200 phone bill. Shoot. Who do you know on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> it's a runaway girl we've got staying with us. Um, you know who she is, Ben, Jill Hansen? Sure. Well, she thinks she's got to uh, keep in touch with all her friends across the country. Well, next time, buy a bus ticket. It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, has she made any offers to pay you back? I don't know how she can. Easy. I had a similar problem with a secretary once. She had an ex-husband in Chicago. They reconciled over the phone at my expense. Then she went back to him. Luckily, I got the phone bill before I was going to mail off her last check. Yeah, but I don't pay Jill anything. No, but she could put in some hours for you here, uh, work a debt off. You know, that's not a half bad idea. Except the problem is that I'm not even needed around here. But I'll think about it, I'll think about it. Thanks for the suggestion. I just wonder how she'll react to the idea. It was all I could do to keep her quiet. I mean, by the time I got her settled, I was exhausted myself. Oh, it sounds awful, I'm sorry. Well, first there was the laughing, then there was the crying. Did she persist with this story about Helen? Persist? She kept ranting for a whole hour. I just couldn't take it anymore, Charles. That's why I called you. You're not angry with me, are you? Angry? Oh, no, I'm grateful. Well, what are we going to do about her? Well, we have to do something that's very obvious and very soon. Charles... You must be thinking terrible things about me. What? Well, you trusted your only daughter to me, and, and look what's happened to her. What's happened is that you've kept her alive, Nancy. Well, I'm responsible for the way she is. Oh, Nancy, don't. How can you even think such things? Well, I think them because look at the way she is. But Miriam's weak. That has nothing whatsoever to do with you. Charles, she's taken a turn for the worse. That's her fault, not yours. You really think that? Yes, I do. Oh, Charles, I was so afraid you were going to blame oh. me. Well, you've been like a sister to her. And I refuse to hear any more about this you being responsible for anything. If anyone was responsible, I am. Oh, but Charles, that's silly. No, it isn't. I owe you an apology. I asked you to take all this on, and I should have done it. Charles, I just can't handle it anymore. Neither one of us can. And I just hate this idea of a family member of mine being unstable. But I recognize the fact that Miriam has got to start seeing a psychiatrist on a regular basis. Well, Charles, I think it's a little more serious than that. What do you mean? Well, I think that maybe she might have to be institutionalized. Nancy, how can you say that? Absolutely not. That's out of the question. Well, but Charles, I was... No! I refuse to believe that. My daughter is not that sick. She's a carpenter, and she's having a little problem right now, and she'll get over it with some help. But she is a carpenter, and don't you ever forget that. Did Ben say when they might be moving in? Well, soon, I hope. He wouldn't be specific, but uh, I guess there's a problem with the equipment. Uh, that's where Dave is this afternoon. Out trying to find a sterilizer or something. Mm. Well, let's just pray that they get everything they need quickly. Oh, agreed. You know, I can't get over that Leon Marshall. I mean, he's a jack of all trades, and he's good at all of them. Well, I think his idea about having Jill work at the bookstore was inspired. Oh, I think so, too. But I don't think Jill did over dinner. Well, I can understand that. 
The bookstore isn't exactly what I'd describe as life in the fast lane. No, it's more like life in the exit ramp. <laughs> <laughs> How about the shoulder of the road and a seldom used one at that? Well, I think Jill can handle it. She's got plenty of spunk. Yeah, I admire that in her. What do you think is the, the real root to her problems? Well, a couple things, I guess. I mean, the biggest problem is she lacks direction. Mm. Look at all the places she's lived in the past couple of years. Well, it seems like such a shame. Well, you know, I really think she can't get along with people. I mean, every time there's a problem with another person, she packs up and leaves. Mm. I mean, she's got to stay and, and try to work things out. I honestly feel that none of that's her fault. I mean, she's a really nice girl who never had anyone to love her. I'm really glad that she's with us, and we can change that. Don't you feel just great? Yeah. I feel fine. Okay, now, come on, come on. Stretch out or you feel worse later oh, on tonight. All right. Help me with this table. All right. Okay, now you just do what I do, okay? Mm -hmm. And one and two and three and stretch. One, one and two and three. Oh. Stretch. Mm -hmm. One, two. Doesn't this feel good? It sure does. You don't fool me, Gene Redlin. Oh, I don't? No, you don't. Ooh, well, I guess you can't blame a fellow for trying. Well, you're the one who wants to do all this tonight. Yeah. Well, when I said exercise, I had more. I was thinking more along the line of taking a walk. Well, you can sit there and get flabby if you want, but I'm going to keep going. But I am exercising. What? Self-control, uh -huh. which is all I can do to keep from grabbing you and whisking you upstairs, lady. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> hey, tell me, hmm? what do you think of Jason's offer? I think it's a compliment. Oh, no kidding, huh? Oh, uh, no, wait a minute. I think that it's interesting that we've been given a chance in all areas of our life. Oh, so th are you saying that that means I should take it, huh? I didn't say that. It sure sounds like you did. I want what's going to make you happy. Hey. <laughs> I am happy, lady. You think taking a new job's gonna make me any happier? It might. And then again, it might make you miserable. Yeah, but still, it gives me a chance to do something a little bit different, huh? Yeah. Pushing a pen for some bureaucratic fat cat. Oh, no, hold on, wait just a minute. Uh Jason's the best there is. And you see, when he says that he is looking out for the little man, then he means that. Now, he acts and speaks from his heart. Now, I know what you're going to say, that a lot of other politicians probably make the same promise that Jason does, but that may be so, but let me tell you something, Jason delivers. But you're safe where you are now. Why should you risk that? Hey, 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 look. I am tired of being safe. I want to do something different. Now is a chance to act on my beliefs. But the big question is, do I have enough guts to put my money where my mouth is? Well, babe, I can't make the decisions for you. But I can pray and ask the Lord to give you guidance. No, I hope the Lord gives us wisdom about what to do with Jill. He will. I think the most important thing is that we should remain firm. Well, she's not going to like that. I know, but it's in her best interest. Well, I hope she deals with it. Mm, I think she will. You know, we've really had a lot of changes since she came to our home. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> the hospital, her arrest, her influence on Jenny. I'm glad of it, though. Mm. I think the Lord really used her to bring our family closer together. She'll always be special to me for that. <laughs>